I built this door, I made these floors, and I installed these windows. I did all this before the crisis. Consumer spending in the United States has shifted. It's moved away from cruise lines, obviously, and movie theaters, and it's moved to home improvement. It seems that during a crisis, a lot of us like to do things that are physical. A lot of sayings are built on this physicality and movement. We talk about beating around the bush, biting the bullet, turning the other cheek. We don't want this situation to get out of hand. We all want stability in the world and that's going to be very difficult. My small contribution is to look at how the Canon M50 stabilizes. To do that, we need to head out of here. Last time I went to the beach, my bag got stolen. The world's not exactly stable at the moment. And so I thought, let's go to the beach. Let's test out a stabilizer and see if we can apply that to how we live our lives. I'm at Trigg Beach in Perth and I've brought along a stabilizer. It's something I purchased pretty early on when I had the Canon M50. And I haven't used it that much. I'm still getting to know it. And that tells you how, how much I value it. Uh, it's not something I use a lot, and so I'm not recommending you buy a stabilizer. There's lots of videos on YouTube showing you how to use a stabilizer or a steady cam like this. None of them really get to the heart of the issue on why I discontinued using it and why a lot of people get equipment like this and they just stick it in the cupboard. Everyone has their own threshold on how much hassle they want to accept. And, I want my filmmaking to be simple. The amount of time it takes to set up a gimbal or a stabilizer completely throws you from your filmmaking. There are other things with the Canon M50 that are a fiddle that are okay for me. I'll accept them. And an example is the battery. Do the door, flip out the battery, get a battery out of your bag, stick the battery in, stick your camera back on the tripod. That level of pain is okay for me. You can have lots of these kind of things with a camera. They do mount up. They do become a problem. For instance, let's say I've just switched out the battery and now I want to change out my lenses and get a different shot. And I've got to go through a similar exercise, disconnect the lens, put a new lens on, and then start filming again. This was one of the reasons when early on with the Canon M50, I thought, well, maybe the best companion for the Canon M50, the best second camera, is another Canon M50 because I don't want to switch out batteries all the time or switch out lenses and it would be easier to just have another M50 with a different lens on it and I could just switch my camera views really quickly. First thing you can do is take the camera off the tripod. And that's another example of how painful this is because you don't really want to be switching between a tripod and a stabilizer throughout your shoot. So that this lens and camera combination is always balanced with the stabilizer, I'm going to position the lens exactly at the end of the base plate. And this will make it consistent every time I use the stabilizer. I've got the lens lined up perfectly with the base plate. In this case, I'm using a variable ND filter. And so this setup is for when I use this lens, this camera, and this ND filter together. Next up, I'm going to disconnect the microphone because that's gonna change the balance and I prefer to shoot without the microphone. And when I'm mounting the camera and balancing it, I need to flip out the screen because I'm going to use the camera with the screen always flipped out. That way I can either film myself or I can spin the, the screen around if I'm facing forward and filming outwards. It's now time to balance the stabilizer. I'm going to spare you the pain. First time that has never happened before. With the camera balanced, I'm going to take this pencil and create a mark from the base plate to the stabilizer. This means anytime I use this camera and lens combination, I can slip it straight into the spot and it'll be perfectly balanced. I can also do this with other lenses. 
I've never liked how the camera spins around on this stabilizer. The screen acts like a sail. It means I need to use my finger against the post to stop it spinning around, but it's pretty awkward. And here's my pencil mark on the base plate, which I can line up with my arrow. For this sequence, I'm walking naturally. A lot of people recommend that you walk like a ninja when you're using a stabilizer. Here, we can see what the impact is like when you walk naturally. I can't see myself doing much filming of myself using a stabilizer. I think it will always be pointed outwards. I've had the Canon M50 for two years and the digital stabilization is pretty poor. Throughout this entire sequence, I've had the digital stabilization set to off. It's a bit snaky here. That's the thing about Australians. Wherever we go in the world, you always find us looking down when we walk uh, because, well, we have the most venomous snakes in the world. And when you're walking through land like this, it's a real risk. Has this made the world more stable? Not a chance. During this lockdown, I've really learnt that I don't need as much stuff. And this stabiliser for me is just another piece of stuff. But if you are really thinking strongly about getting a gimbal, I'd definitely try a Steadicam first because it's a lot cheaper and you may just find you don't need it. And here we come to one of the only reasons why I would recommend this stabilizer. And that's because the Canon M50 doesn't have very good slow motion. The stabilizer can provide that feeling of slow motion in real time. It could be useful when you're moving around a corner, like I'm doing around this bush. And before my arm falls off from carrying this stabilizer, I'm off for a surf. Please go ahead and subscribe and pretty soon I'll be doing a video on in-camera colour profiles.